Um, hello, Grant? Oh, Mr Skinner. Hello, it's Robert. Hi there. Robert, are you happy for me to call you Robert? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Happy for That's me to fine. call you Grant. Mike, Mike, my first name. Oh, oh, Mike, oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was... I do beg your pardon, Mike, beg your pardon. No, no, that's OK, no problem. Thank you. Um, I have so tried... Apologies again for, for being so long from the blind to email, but... Uh, that's OK. Strange times in which we live at the moment, there's been quite a bit to sort out for the conversation. <coughs> yes, of course, of course, yes, I, I fully understand that. Thank you for spending a bit of time to speak to me. I guess you must be very busy phoning people in your congregation and, and checking up and that sort of thing, of course. Yes. That's not a problem. Not a problem, sir. Thank, thank you. Um, could I first ask, where, where where are you based? Because I wasn't able to get through to my local Kingdom Hall, so I I used the Charity Commission website. So, right, where's, where's your Kingdom Crim Where's your Kingdom Hall based? Which... In Crimplesham, Norfolk. You're down the market. Right. Are you Are you not from this area? <laughs> no, Crimplesham. That's. Crimplesham, yes, that's the name of the village where the Kingdom Hall is, just, just outside down the market, West Norfolk. Oh, right. No, I, I've heard of down a market, um, but that's quite some way away from from Cornwall. <laughs> oh, that's where you are, is it, in Cornwall? Um, <laughs> just, just on the border, just on the border, yeah. Right. Yes. OK. Um, well, oh, well, I can get somebody, I can certainly get somebody from the local congregation to follow up with you if you'd like that. Yes, yes, by all means. Okay, by all means. What, what's the um, town or village you live in? Because then I can sort out with um, everybody you actually come in. I would be quite close to Liscard. Liscard, right. That, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Um, yep, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll certainly do that after I've spoken to you. Um, you've obviously had somebody that would call on you at some time, presumably, to, uh, to leave these books with you. Um, I've collected them from the trolley, but I, have, I, I did have somebody who came to me a few years ago, but we stopped at Chapter 4 because I would believe in the Trinity, and he said, well, therefore, it wasn't for me. And um, So, very strangely, he sort of finished it when we got to Chapter 4 of What Does the Bible Really Teach, which I've, I've got in front of me here. <laughs> um, well, that's quite a strange, strange decision because um, pretty much all religions believe in the Trinity apart from us. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't normally stop once we get to there unless you were quite adamant about it. <laughs> well, it's not a case of being adamant. I'm, I am passionate for my belief, and I do know it very well. I did a university degree in theology. Perhaps he was intimidated by that, but um, well, possibly. Um, but um, he sort of didn't want to continue. Um, I'm, I'm looking at what does the Bible really teach on page 85. Right. And I'm, I'm really puzzled about the kingdom. It says in the footnote, the second footnote, the kingdom started to rule in 1914. Yes. And since then, Satan has been cast out of pre uh, heaven down to earth. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Yep. And then towards the middle of the page... Uh, paragraph 23 continues, world events that began in 1914 confirmed that the understanding of these sincere Bible students was correct. The fulfillment of Bible prophecy shows that in 1914 Christ became king and God's heavenly kingdom began to rule. Right. Yep. Um, I find that a little difficult to accept that I believe Christ became king, you see, at his resurrection. Um... But would this explain the antagonism that the Jehovah's Witnesses seem to have towards the governments of this world and the British government and the American government, which another of your book, um, Revelation, its grand climax at hand on page 252, says is the satanic seventh headed wild beast, the, the, the seventh head of the wild beast. If you believe in a monarchy, you know, um, that Christ became king in 1914. Yeah. Monarchy means, it comes from two Greek words, monos and arche, monos one. Arche has a range of meanings. It can mean source or origin. Yeah. It can mean yeah. ruler. So monarchy means a single ruler. 
if you believe that Jesus became king in 1914 and he appointed the Watchtower Society to represent him, he cleansed the organisation and appointed them in 1919, would that explain the sort of antagonism towards the sort of governments of this world, including the British government? Well, we don't have an antagonism towards them at all, sir. Um, <clears throat> they are in their place, as, as the Bible actually tells us, that the superior authorities are in their place by God's allowance, if you like. He allows them to rule at this time. Um, so unless anything they say comes into direct conflict with uh, what the Bible tells us to do, then we are in submission to the superior authorities. Well, so too as, would be as, the... as like now that we're all staying at home, um, not going to our meetings because that's what the government's asked us to do. So we're complying with that because it doesn't conflict with God's law. Well, so would every other religion. So would the Catholics. So would the Mormons. So yeah. would the Baptists. So yeah. would the Pentecostals. They could give exactly the same answer. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. absolutely. Yeah, but but your book says that Satan is the ruler of this world. Page mm. page thirty one under the title "Who Rules This World." Paragraph 11, Jesus never doubted that Satan is the ruler of this world. Yes. Because um, if you go back to the temptation um, after his baptism when he was in the wilderness, Satan offered him all the kingdoms of the world. That's one of the temptations that he placed before Jesus. So he couldn't have done that unless they were his to give. Um, just a second just take a look at that Matthew 4 he showed him the kingdoms of this world and their glory and he said to him all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me of course yeah. it was Satan who was speaking um he wasn't, this, this is actually explained on the next page, on page 32, when I read this book. Um, think about this. Would that offer have been a temptation to Jesus if Satan were not the ruler of these kingdoms? So it seems to imply that Satan rules every kingdom of this world. Indeed. Yes. When, uh, Jesus is ruling at the moment and he's ruling from heaven. Um, when the war of Armageddon comes is when he will, he will take over that um, that situation on the earth. But at the moment, and this is why we're in, in the state we are, I mean, if, if Jesus was actually ruling the world at the moment, do you think we would have the problems that we had? Well, I do think that Jesus is ruling the world at this moment, but he rules in the midst of his enemies, Psalm 110, verse 2. Yeah, um, people have right. the, the, the choice, the freedom to to, to, to follow Christ or, or, to, or to follow um, worldly things including including Satan if they so choose and it's up to everyone to make a choice at the moment Christ is certainly Absolutely. ruling yeah. Psalm 110 verse 2 in the midst of his enemies but his kingdom at the moment is a spiritual kingdom I think after Armageddon when Christ physically bodily returns to this earth then I think he will his kingdom will not just be a simply a spiritual kingdom I believe it will be a physical kingdom on the restored or the renewed earth but the, the book yeah. seems to go on a on we have a different sort of opinion because we don't think that Jesus is returning according to the scripture that he won't return in a physical body to the earth. Right, okay, that's a bit new to me. But that's another, that's another thing. Yes, okay, um, okay. Well, I'm scribbling things down here, Mike. I'm, I'm sorry yeah, I got well, your name wrong. Yeah, we're leaping about. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the, the idea of, of normally when we study with people is that you, you deal with it in a logical sequence as you go through, like you, you've started to go through the... Um, the book, what that book's actually been superseded now by another one by what the, what the Bible teaches um, but doing that logically and then as these things crop mm. up and then the questions crop up you know, we deal with them <laughs> yes. deal with them at that point yeah. and, uh, uh, and then we'll move on to the rest because otherwise you could sort of spend all your time hurtling about in lots of different directions as every little query sort of comes up and Yes. Not, not, not dealing with them in a logical sequence to be able to cope with it, if you know what I mean. Yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not criticising you in any oh, way. No, no, I'm thank you. For that. Don't misunderstand me, but it, sure. it's obviously um, yeah, a lot easier to, because there are lots of things that answer to one question, as they say, often throw up reasons for another question, don't they? 
Yes. Well, if you'd like to speak again another time, maybe it would be better to stick to just you choose one single topic and we would look at that. I am spending a lot of my time at the moment while I'm self-isolating at home, reading the Bible and reading your 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 various books that I've um, picked up from the carts. Um, yeah. Um, just, just to continue. The Revelation book that you've got, um, yes. I would imagine, um, if you picked it up from the cart, that was obviously quite a while ago. Um, it, um, was, it was given to me, a Jehovah's Witness uh, gave it to me when I expressed an interest in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Um, it's how, the, how long ago would that have been, sir? Um, that would be about six months ago. Right. Um, has it got any um, any sort of pieces sort of stuck in it, any other or any printed material that came with it? No, it was, um, was it just the book itself. It was a used paperback edition with a few marks in it, um, right. a bit dog-eared cover. Um, but the person <laughs> said I might find it interesting, and so I've been ploughing through that. And I, it is a very interesting right. book. Yes, there, there have been because um, that was written back in '88, I think, off the top of my head. And uh, as things have become clearer, there has been quite a lot of updates to that. Um, uh, not change the fundamental thinking of it, but a lot of it. But um, you don't have internet access, you say? Not at no, not at the moment. I. Um, the library is, is closed, unfortunately. Um, ah, right, you use the library, yeah. Yes, and I would occasionally go to a friend's house or flat, but of course I, I can't do that at the moment, so I don't yeah. have internet access. Right. Um, well, when, when you do and go to the website, um, you, there, all the publications are on there. I know uh, that. I've, I've been there. I, I know that. I've been there regularly. Downloading regular. the, the, um, the version off of the internet, which will be... Um, I don't think so. I think this is the latest, the latest version of the Revelation book. Let me just take a look. Uh, Two thousand and six printing. So it's published in nineteen eighty eight, as you said, but it's the two thousand and six yes. printing. So I think it's oh, right. no, one of the latest be, ones. It might be up to date then. Yes. Okay. Yeah, fine. Um, well, if, if you'd like to talk again, you're more than more than welcome. Um, I will. I will certainly pass your telephone number on if that's yes. okay. Yes. Yes, of course. Please, to, please to do. Who's actually in in your area? And um, and you're and, more than welcome to. Over, I might be able to get to see you face to face and have a discussion. <laughs> Um, well, hopefully not at the moment. I don't want to meet face to face. But Mike, you're more than welcome to call me again. Could I just finish off page 32 of what does the Bible really teach? Because I've marked something else up hang in on, the book on, about the kingdom. I'm on page 32. Which chapter is oh, um, 17? What is the God's purpose for the earth? Ah, right, chapter 3. Yeah, come to you, what is God's purpose for the earth? Are you, are you there? Page, page 32. Paragraph. Paragraph 12. Thank you. Um, it says, of course, Jehovah is the almighty God, the creator of the marvelous universe. Yet nowhere does the Bible te say that either Jehovah God or Jesus Christ is the ruler of this world. In fact, Jesus specifically referred to Satan as the ruler of this world. So I'm, I'm unhappy with the emphasis upon Satan, Satan, Satan. Um, I don't see Satan as the ruler of this world at all. I believe that um, Yahweh God is the owner and the ruler of this world. Um, Christ rules in the midst of his enemies, so there's rebellion, while Christ's kingdom, which is a, currently a spiritual kingdom, is being built. And that verse, Psalm 110, verse 2, says that Christ rules in the midst of his enemies. But, yeah. I mean, I mean well, think which of... Is what he's obviously doing at the moment, as you say. Yeah. Um, but think of... And some... that happened, obviously, in heaven when, when they 
the war broke out in heaven, and Jesus was obviously already resurrected to heaven at that time, and, and that battle with Satan took place there when he was cast out and confined to the area of the earth. Yeah. Um, but, but Mike, um, think about Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. It says the earth is the Lord's, Yahweh. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, Psalm 24, 1. It seems to imply consistently throughout the Old Testament that this world belongs to to Yahweh God. Um, yes, yeah, well, that's, well, that's right, as the, as the creator of it. Psalm, Psalm 50. Uh, Psalm 24, Psalm verse. That was Psalm 24, verse 1. I've got the New King James yeah. here. I'll see yeah. how, how it reads in that. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. I tend to yeah. memorise the King James. This is the New King James. How does your Bible read? Psalm 24, verse 1. It says to Jehovah, obviously, and not the Lord. And you've got the Lord in capital letters, presumably, still in the King James. Yes, because it's yeah. YHWH. It's a tetragram. Yeah, which is in the footnotes at the front, or the, the, the that's actually say that that's Jehovah. Um, yes, there's never any doubt about that. Jehovah, as how the does yours... of the earth, it belongs to him. How, um, how does your Bible read? Um, exactly the same. To Jehovah belong the earth and everything in it, the productive land and those dwelling on it. Right. Um, okay. So as the creator of the earth, he, he owns it. He, it is his. Right. But he doesn't then, joint own it with can't... Satan. You know, there's not a Sorry? joint... He doesn't joint own it with Satan. There's not a, no, a joint Satan, ownership. Satan doesn't own the world. He's just ruling it at the moment. Um, well, he rules those who are in rebellion to God. He doesn't obviously rule over God's people who love God and serve God. He only rules over those people who are in rebellion to God. Yeah. 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 Um, and one other verse is Psalm 50, verse 12. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all its fullness. It seems to echo what we've read in Psalm 24. For the world is mine and all its fullness. So when Satan offered Christ... Um, the glory of the kingdoms of the world in, in Matthew 4. He wasn't saying he physically owns every kingdom and every square inch of land on this earth. He's only offering to Christ those people who are in rebellion to God. Surely. Well, no, because he offered, he offered the kingdoms. He didn't say part of the kingdoms, did he? But, so but, you can have, have this bit, but not that. Um, but but how could Satan offer the kingdoms to Christ when the Lord owns this world? Sh surely, surely Jesus or, or sh surely the devil and God don't joint own this world. It, it's owned by God, and all that Satan yeah, owns would, would be those people who are rebellion. But when, but when he mounted that challenge, we go back to the Garden of Eden when when he mounted the challenge by telling Eve that if she ate from the, the fruit of the tree, mm -hmm. she would not die, which is was an out, an out lie because she did die. Obviously, she's not around now. Um, but that challenge was mounted in such a way that what he was challenging was not God's power, because he could have demonstrated that straight away by wiping out Satan. But what he, what he challenged was his right to rule. And in fairness, um, the Holy God obviously had to give him time to prove whether that was the case or not. And that's what's happening and that's what's going on in the world today, that, that they've had the opportunity or the world's had the opportunity to have mm -hmm. every sort of government. You know, you've had dictatorships, you've had all democracy, theocracy, all sorts of, of yeah. rules throughout yeah. the world to try and prove that they are better than the rule that was offered by God. Um, despite the best efforts of some who've got great intentions, um, whatever they do, nobody's ever going to end sickness, as we can see now, certainly. Um, never going to end food shortages and never put an end to wars. And that's what God's kingdom has promised to do, isn't it? All these things will come to an end. At the consummation of all things at Christ's second coming to this earth, yes, I believe that yeah. that, will, that will happen. Um, but... I, I, my understanding, Mike, would be that Christ became king at his resurrection, you see. Because Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 talks about um, the kingdom 
uh, and I've been very interested in this, I've been spending a lot of time looking at this, it, it seems to me to imply that Christ became king at his resurrection, which is why the, a past tense in Greek, that's called an aorist, is used. Past tense is used here to say that the kingdom was already established. The kingdom of the son had, had already been established. Well, if there's the kingdom of his son, then Christ is the king because you, you, you can't have a kingdom and not have a king. Colossians 1.13 says, He has, past tense, delivered us from the power of darkness and translated yeah. us, past tense, into the kingdom yeah. of the son of his love. Well, translated is first hours active indicative. I, I'm not a Greek scholar. I'm not a clever person. But the Greek scholars tell me that that's aorist. It's completed action. It already happened. It's active. Yeah. So it's, it's already happened. It's already done in the past. It's completed. And it's indicative, which means it's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a command. So the kingdom. Yeah, well, it's been, been written by um, all that time. Who was one of the anointed and had the heavenly hope to go to heaven with and to rule with Jesus, and that's why he's saying there, isn't he? That he was rescued from the authority of the darkness. Him, him along with the fellow Christians at that time, who would have had the heavenly hope and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son so yes because jesus when he was on the earth was teaching about the kingdom they knew all about the kingdom and they had that hope to look forward to i don't quite follow you sorry could, could, could you just say that again i don't quite follow you it's a past tense the kingdom was already yeah. established when paul wrote yes. colossians 1 13. he's not using yeah. future tenses and saying he will deliver us future tense meaning 1914 from the power of darkness and he will no. translate us future tense meaning in 1914 into the kingdom of the son of his love which is going to be established in the year 1914 there's it, yeah. it, this is written in the past tense in, in the english translation greek is aorist completed action so the kingdom of god was already established when paul wrote colossians 1:13. no what do you think saying yes it's it's you're right, it's in the past tense because he was so sure of the reward that he was going to be getting. Well, there's another there's no, another interpretation, and that is that the kingdom was already established, which is why the past tense was used. I mean, um, you could use that argument to, to prove almost anything, you know, yeah. couldn't you? Well, that, well that's, that's right. Um, and apart from the fact that it's over God himself, who said that Jesus will be ruling in the midst of his enemies, um, until yeah. that, that power was given to him, he didn't assume authority in heaven, but the kingdom, the kingdom was set up and was right back, if you go back to the book of Genesis, so, sorry, you when said the rebellion he, took place. I'm just trying to follow uh, you, Mike. You said he didn't accept authority. When, when are you saying he didn't accept authority? On his resurrection. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't the head of the kingdom um, at that time. You say he didn't have authority at his resurrection? Well, he would have had authority as a spirit creature. Can yes, you just slow down? I'm just trying to follow you, and I'm, I'm scribbling notes here as I'm, as I'm listening to you, because I'm trying to take this in. Did you say that Christ did not have authority at no, his resurrection? Kingdom, well, no, he would have had authority as God's son, but the kingdom wasn't established until 1914, so he, he wasn't ruling over the kingdom at that time. Well, he says in Matthew... At the, at the time of his resurrection. Well, he says in Matthew twenty-eight eighteen again, aorist in Greek, which is past tense in English. Then Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been, there's the aorist, past tense in English, given to me in heaven and on earth. Matthew yeah. twenty-eight eighteen. Then Jesus yeah. came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, written as a past tense. So Christ has all authority at his Resurrection. I thought I heard you say he didn't have all authority at his no, resurrection. No, no, he, he had authority. No, I just said his kingdom wasn't set up at, at his resurrection. He but, certainly had the authority because he sort of, he proved faithful to God, proved it was faithful to um, endure that mm. um, terrible mm. death, um, proving Satan's claim false because Satan claimed that people would only worship God for what they got out of it. And Adam as a perfect man lost the future of mankind and so he had to have a perfect man to to represent or to pay that sacrifice mm. to balance out what Adam had lost and so certainly he had all authority because he was given authority by mm. God so if he has all authority in both heaven and on earth 
Satan's not the ruler of this earth, is it? It's Christ who's the rightful ruler of this earth, not Satan. And Christ has a kingdom because kings have authority. There's a difference between authority and earth, isn't there? Pardon? I said there is a difference between authority and the actual implementation of it. Well, Christ you can is... have authority, but that doesn't mean to say that you're, um, you're actually doing the job. You've got the authority to do it. You may have been appointed to that job, but you may not have taken it over. Well, you know, so he you were, has. You, got, you were the you were CEO, you know, given the job as a CEO of the company, um, and you were going to start in three months' time. You have the authority because you've got the job, but you're not doing anything because you haven't taken it over. But Christ has the authority in both heaven and on earth. And that is to be declared. It's not a it's a spiritual kingdom that Christ is building at the present time. But that spiritual kingdom is to be declared by his people. That's what evangelism is all about. It's not going yeah. around, you know, with a bleeding heart saying, oh, please accept Jesus. Please make a decision for Jesus, you know, and going on and on about Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Oh, no, evangelism no. is no. telling people about the rule of Christ. The kingdom of God was established. That's why Colossians 1.13 translated is first aris active indicative, which you didn't really explain. He has, past tense, translated us from the power of darkness and translated yeah. us, past tense in English, in Greek, first aris active indicative and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. The kingdom's already established. When Paul's writing to the Colossians in, in about AD well, 60... Well, no, because he was still on the earth. He hadn't died, had he? What do you mean? What do you mean he's still on? If it, was, if it was a spiritual kingdom. Sorry, what I mean, do you mean he's, he's still in, in a fleshly body, isn't he? I'm just trying to follow you, Mike. What do you mean he's still on the earth? Are you talking when about he that, when he wrote that? He was still alive. He hadn't died, so he hadn't been transferred into the kingdom because he was still a human living on life with living life on earth with human. Frailties. Who? Who? Are you talk about the apostle Paul. Paul, the writer of Colossians. Yeah. Yeah. Paul says he has delivered us. Us, yeah. okay, is a plural. It's okay. It yeah, refers to Paul and, and his listeners. First, yeah, so I say all the first century Christians had the opportunity to, to be part of the ruling class in heaven. No, they and didn't that's what he was have an opportunity. He says he has delivered us. It's a past tense. Yes, because he had total faith and belief in God that that was the situation. Right. So he, the kingdom. He would, he would be one of those, but you can't. So he, he was physically still on the earth, wasn't he, when he wrote those words? Yes, because the kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, and whether you're in heaven or whether you're on earth, the kingdom of God. My point is, is where it was already established when Paul wrote Colossians one thirteen. He has delivered us. Us means Paul and the people he's writing to. It's a past yes, tense. Century Christians. We so have been delivered from the power of darkness and we are translated into the kingdom, past tense, translated yeah. us, past tense, into the kingdom yeah. of the son of his love. So the kingdom of God was already established when Paul wrote Colossians 1.13. And if the kingdom of God was already yeah. established, which I agree is not a physical kingdom here on this present earth at the present time. It's a spiritual kingdom. Christ is ruling from heaven. I agree with you in that. But Paul and the Christians he's writing to, they had, past tense, been delivered from the power of darkness and translated, past tense, into the kingdom of the Son, meaning Christ is the king of that kingdom because you can't have a kingdom without a king. So the kingdom no. of God was already established when Paul wrote... Well, no, because he's still talking about future events. It's the same, same but he's using a past tense. You have a belief, but Mike, you have Mike... A Mike, yeah, could, could you explain... He was concerned, he was so convinced that it would have already taken place. But, but, but then anything could mean anything. You, you know, if Paul wanted to say that the kingdom is going to be created in the year 1913, he would have used a future tense. He will deliver us from the power of darkness and he will, future tense, deliver us into the kingdom of the son of his love, implying 1913. But he's saying, no, us, we have already been delivered into that kingdom. Paul and his writers in Colossae, they have already been delivered. He has past tense. I mean, I mean, what does a past tense mean, Mike? Yeah, because he, he, as far as he was concerned, it had taken place. It's the same as what you're saying about now, that if, if you have a belief in God and you do your best to mm. live a life in harmony with his requirements... Right. We have a hope yeah. that we are going to share in that future. Um, 
And if you're totally convinced that's the case, you can say, right, I'm, I'm there, unless you go and make a major mistake yeah. and fall foul of it. Mike, what would the Bible have to say? How would the Bible have to read to tell us that the kingdom was already established when Paul wrote the book of Colossae? How would that verse have to read? Well, it's not a question of how that verse would have to read. It's a question of whether or not the kingdom was established, wasn't it? But Paul says it was established. No, Paul saying Paul is saying what he's saying because he's absolutely convinced that he's already, because of the fact that he followed Jesus, because of the fact that he um, did exactly what was required of him, and was an apostle and used mm. in a great way by God, that, uh, that he could be absolutely certain that that would be his future. When, and the same with the first century Christians yep. that he was writing to yep. in Colossae, that if they remained faithful, that promise was so good that it was as good as if it had taken place. Right, away. so... He wasn't delivered into the kingdom at that present time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because he was still on the earth. Right. He was still but on the earth as an imperfect human. He uses the past tense. He has delivered yeah. us from no, the power of darkness. Yeah. Was, so, so are you saying that Paul is not delivered from the power of darkness? He says, Colossians 1.13, using Aorist. Mike, could, I, could I finish yeah. my point, once please? He, yeah. he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Are you saying that that hadn't happened? Paul was still under Satan's control when he wrote this. He was expecting to be delivered from the power of darkness in the year 1913. No, he was... I'm saying just a full question that he was totally convinced he'd been delivered because he'd heard the message. Now, could you address what I've said? That's what I am doing. Yeah. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Was Paul yeah, delivered from the power of darkness when he wrote this? Right, so the the yeah, arist, the arist by, case by the in Greek, that he had, not that it had already taken place, because even after he wrote those words in Colossians, he could have committed a gross sin and lost that opportunity, as many first century Christians did. So you're they saying away that from the Bible, didn't they? So when pa- it wasn't definitely there, because he could still have lost it. So when Paul uses the past tense, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Arist in Greek, simple past tense in English. Yeah. You say he was already delivered from the power of darkness. The, the past tense indicates that. Yes, yeah, but not in a, not in a physical sense. No, it, it, because of the fact that they knew, he knew what the future was going to no, be. And the, what his future I'm talking about the power be. of darkness, which is not a physical yeah. thing. It's a spiritual thing inst- instituted by Satan. Paul says he has delivered the us from the power of world, darkness. Yes. And so because it's a past tense, you will agree that that had already happened. It was already completed when Paul wrote to his uh, readers in Colossae. And the us applies to both Paul and to his his readers. And they had already been delivered from the power of darkness, as indicated by the past tense. Were you brought up as a believer? Um, I was a nominal. I was a nominal Catholic. Right. Um. Well, I wasn't brought up in any religion whatsoever. Yeah. I, I was a worldly individual. Um, and I lived quite happily in the world, following my life, doing exactly what I wanted to do, enjoying myself without any disregard yeah. whatsoever yeah. for God or his laws. I had no interest in religion at all. But when I eventually um, studied the Bible and got to know what it was all about, I changed my life completely. Now... I have a hope for the future of living on a paradise earth, and as far as I'm concerned, that hope is made sure and it's already taken place, but I'm not, because I'm still here living in this Yes, I, 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 I agree with you that mankind's ultimate destiny will be to live on the restored or the renewed earth. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10 says, they shall reign upon the earth. I agree with you on that. Yeah. But I'm asking yeah. you about, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Colossians yeah. one well, thirteen. It's, it's written it's, in an hourist... The and same comparison, because as far as I'm concerned, I've been delivered from the power of darkness because I live my life now. With the, no, with the I'm, not asking, I'm, I'm not asking about you. I'm, not, in, I'm no. not asking about you. I'm not interested in that. I'm asking about well, Paul. It's, it's, the same, it's the same situation that Paul had. No, when he was no, no, time. because you're living in the year 2020, 106 years after 1914. Paul was living, when he wrote this, in about AD 60, and he was living about... Um, 1850 something years or 1860 years before 1914 so when Paul says he has delivered us from the power of darkness that's arist in Greek 
which is a simple past tense in English, you agree with me that Paul and his listener, because the us applies to both Paul and the people at Colossae, the Christians at Colossae, both Paul and the Christians at Colossae had been already delivered from the power of darkness, as indicated by the past tense. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to go round and round in circles, aren't we? <laughs> well, it's a simple um, yes or no. Was Paul well, delivered? No, it, I, I have and I've explained it, but you won't accept my explanation, so... Um, well, I'm trying to go through the verse word by word, because I could, you know, you, sp you speak to a Mormon and they'll talk for hours giving you explanations that are irrelevant to any specific verse that you show them. You know, they want to talk about Joseph Smith and I bear my testimony and I've got sacred underwear with Masonic symbols on and blah, blah, blah. And they just talk and talk and talk. But they don't answer specific questions. All right. Um, let's go to Timothy. Timothy talks about Christ as king. First Timothy one sixteen. However, for this reason, I obtain mercy and that first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Would I be right in assuming that Christ is called a king here? And this again would be written about AD 60, you know, um, about 1850 years before 1914, Christ is called a king. So Christ was yeah, a king. He became he a king at his he resurrection. Was, he was designated to, to be the king of the kingdom. Jehovah gave him that um, that in, uh, position before he even came to the earth as a human. But he's a king when Paul wrote to Timothy in about AD sixty. It's not yeah, saying he, you will become a king in nineteen fourteen. He was a king when Paul wrote. Yeah, because it was a cast iron guarantee from God, so he could say that, couldn't he? But you're saying he was not a king. When Paul wrote this, Paul's actually telling a lie, because Christ wasn't a king. No, I'm not saying he's a lie. <laughs> right. Was Christ a king <laughs> in AD certain. 60? I'm when... certain that that was going to take place. When Paul Never wrote... He was, king, he was king designate. But he's, if he's a king designate, it means he's not a king. Yeah, he, he wasn't given that kingdom to rule over it until 1914, when his kingdom was established. But why... Why yeah, well, using the present tense? Time, Satan was still there. But why does Paul use the present tense in First Timothy one seventeen? Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. He's using a present tense. He's not using a yeah. future tense and saying, well, you know, he will be uh, king. Uh, he will be the Eternal King in nineteen fourteen. He will become the uh, King in nineteen fourteen. He's using a present tense. Yeah, and he's referring to Christ as a king in the present tense. Why is he doing that if Christ yeah, is not a king? He's, he's totally convinced of, uh, of what he says. Right. Um, anyway, so we're, we're, we're going to go around in circles. Well, OK, no, just one other, it, it one other thing from what does the Bible really, really, really teach? Paragraph 12 on page 32. Honestly, it's a different, it's a different topic. It says, yeah. paragraph 12 on page 32, of course, Jehovah is the almighty God, the creator of the marvellous universe. Are you aware that early in Watched Our History, now I've got these books, so I'm not making it up, I've actually got the books. Um, you used to teach that Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection. That's in Berean Bible Teacher's Manual, page 454. And also the finished mystery, which is called Studies in the Scripture, volume seven, on page 15 and page 240, both of them say that Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection. OK, and Christ is also called the Almighty God in the Watchtower, 1893. I think the page number is 115, but I'm working from memory. So there's four bits of Jehovah's Witness literature, which I've got. I've got all these. And they say that Christ is the Almighty God. Now, you don't teach that now. But you were teaching that at the time that Jesus supposedly did an inspection and a cleansing work between 1914 and 1919. And Jesus never said to the Watchtower leaders, this is heresy, your claim that uh, I, Jesus Christ, became God, at, became the almighty God at my resurrection. They were teaching that for many years after 1919. They were worshipping Jesus Christ as God until the 1950s. Um, it was only in 1954, 1st of January 1954, I've been on your website, jw.org, and the Watchtower for the 1st of January 1954, that's the Watchtower which did away with the worship of Jesus. Yeah? 
So yeah. why did you teach that Christ became the Almighty God? Proverbs 4.18. Um, that's got nothing to do with it. Anyone could... Yes, it has. <laughs> yes, it has, because as time has gone on, things have gone clearer. It's like prophecy. You can have prophecy, what would you like? But until it's taken place, it, it's not certain. It's only looking back on it that you can say, oh, yes, that prophecy mm. was fulfilled. Well, Proverbs... And all that's happened over the... We're not dogmatic, that's the point. We haven't stuck and said, well, that's what we're teaching and that's, that's it. Um... No, no, no. Proverbs four eighteen does not say the light gets brighter and brighter. It says the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. There is no Bible verse that says light gets no, brighter and brighter. Bright, That's a misinterpretation. Light that grows brighter. Pardon? Yeah, the, the bright morning light that gro glows. No, brighter. no, no. It's the path of the righteous that gets yeah. lighter and lighter, and it's got nothing yeah, to path, do. And it's got, truth, it's got nothing to do with allowing false doctrine. If people make a blasphemous false doctrine, all right, like the Mormons, all right, or the, the Catholics, let's say a Catholic priest says, we, we are the true religion. We are the only religion that God appoints. And you say, yeah. why did you used to take people down into the dungeons of your cathedrals and burn them with fire, stretch them on racks and torture people slowly to death and then put them on a bonfire if, if they're not dead already and burn them? And the Catholic priest says to you, the light gets brighter and brighter. What about the Mormons yeah. saying men well, could become case, gods? They still call themselves father when Jesus quite clearly when he was I, on the I earth, don't go to. There is no, nobody called father. I don't father. go to any right. church. I don't go to a Catholic church. I stopped as, as, as a child going to a Catholic church. So I'm not responsible for Catholic teachings. I'm just pointing out no, that I'm any just, weird... I'm, well, the same thing, so. I'm just pointing out that any weird cult could say the light gets brighter and brighter to explain away their false doctrine. Now... Yeah. Well, why if, if, why didn't if you Jesus think we're aware of cults and we're, then we're not having a lot of good in, in, in continuing our discussion. But if well, you certainly to can't answer to contact you, you from your area, if you want to talk to them, yes, that's please. Up to you. Yes, but if you if, if you, not, you obviously they'd understand. Yes, if you want to contact okay. them for me, that's fine. Alright. I'll just leave you with one thought, sir. First Corinthians one twenty seven. So thank you very much for your time. Could I'll I respond to that? Yeah, if you want. Okay, one because I don't like having Bible verses machine gunned at me when the person just runs alone. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame those which are mighty. OK, and your point is? That he chose the only thing. He's not chosen the university professors he's not chosen people with degrees he's not chosen the, the people that this world would consider to be um the top dogs if you like agreed um, agreed agreed he, he's, agreed he's old, ordinary people who are humble as jesus said humble yeah. people that, and in translation as you're probably aware uh, means teachable but you're Those not teachable but Mike, you're not teachable and you're not prepared to learn because your faith is not in Christ, it's in the Watchtower Society. No, it's not. You have blind faith in the Watchtower Society. You're running away now because you don't want to discuss. No, because you're just going to go round and round in circles because you believe what you believe. I'm quoting I'm your literature. To, I'm Mate, I'm I don't, else. I don't, I, have, I do not believe that Christ became the almighty God at his resurrection. That's not what I believe. That's in your <laughs> history. That's what you used to teach. I've given you your own literature and references you in your own literature to that. Yeah. Now, how do you, 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 how you do you, you, you just, you said that you believed he became king when he was resurrected. Yes, that's different you to the almighty, the that's different that. to the almighty God. That's a different topic. The idea that Christ became the almighty God at his resurrection is not something held by Trinitarians. It's not something that I hold to. It's something that you taught for many decades in the Watchtower Society. Now, if Jesus did a, an inspection and a cleansing work and he cleansed the society of all its errors between 1914 and 1919, why were people for decades after that still teaching that Christ became the almighty God at his resurrection? 
And why were Jehovah's Witnesses worshipping even your Watchtower charters, like the 1945 Revised Charter, page 2, says this society was set up for the worship of Almighty God and Jesus Christ. So you were worshipping both the Father and the Son. Now that was done away with in the mid-50s. You had a change. But why were you worshipping Jesus Christ if that's wrong? Uh, because God and Jesus Christ do exist, and God is God is the head. He's not, not we don't believe but it's the same thing that Trinitarians believe. But they're two they're two separate two separate individuals. But why did you and worship God and Jesus the other? And yeah. we, we worship God is the Almighty and the Creator, as we discussed in those verses that you read, and that Jesus was is the King of the Kingdom, and He is the one that will bring an end to this system of things. But we, why? We still, well, we still worship both of them. Whatever was going on back in the nineteen, whatever it was. You still worship Jesus Christ. Yeah. You still worship Jesus Christ today. Yes, because he, he is the, he is the route through which we approach God. We have to pray through Jesus because of our imperfection. We can't pray direct to God. All I, of our prayers have to be. I said worship. Him. I said worship. Do you worship Jesus Christ? Well, it depends what you define as worship. Okay, fair enough. We certainly honour him as the king of the kingdom and the king of the future kingdom to take place on this earth, and mm. so yes. Mm. But it's funny that when you started, your first president, William Henry Connolly, was a Trinitarian. Russell was secretary-treasurer. This is before the incorporation oh. in December 1884. Your first president was a Trinitarian. One well, of the Because they came out of the original church at that time. That was the, the fact of the teachings that didn't mm. add up when they looked at it in the Bible is what mm. started the whole thing off. But why were so, these... Yes, they were, all, they were all original Trinitarians and, and came from all sorts of religions, yeah. with sorts of beliefs. But we can see Bible students who are interested mm. in seeing what the Bible actually said rather than what they were being taught by the, but, the churches but, at that time. But why didn't Jesus clear out the errors of the Watchtower Society, such as the use of the pyramid to make Bible prophecies, um, the worship of Jesus as the Almighty God, that Christ became the Almighty God is the resurrection, the worship of Jesus Christ, the keeping of Christmas and birthdays, the, the belief that, that the second presence of Christ was 1874. OK, that was taught as late as 1929 in the book Prophecy, page 65, which again I've got. Why didn't Jesus cleanse the society of all these errors in 1919? Because you say he did an inspection and a cleansing work between 1914 and 1919. Well, why were there all these errors for more than a decade after 1919? were going to dispense as it says in the Bible again, dispense the food at the proper time. So you couldn't change everything overnight at once. At one time, um, the organisation was smoking. People in the organisation, they were celebrating birthdays. But you say and Jesus that did an inspection... That in harmony with what Jesus said. They had blood transfusions in the early days. There probably some that took drugs. All sorts of things that would have gone on. But so gradually, gradually it's been sorted out. So Jesus did not do an inspection and a cleansing work between 1919, did he? Yes, he did, because he had to sort out who was going to be the uh, who was going to be the faithful slave on the earth that would get the spiritual food to dispense. But the faithful so slave has to be faithful. They weren't, they weren't all. <clears throat> yes, weren't, but the faithful. Those that were present prior to that, they, when it became necessary to do the preaching work, half of them were left. Yeah, but the, a faithful slave has to be faithful. Judge Rutherford taught and i've got the book millions now living will never die it's based on a sermon he gave in 1918 okay the book's published in 1920 one year after 1919 but it's based on a 1918 sermon judge rutherford taught page 88 of millions now living will never die and i've got the book that abraham isaac and jacob would rise from the dead in 1925 that was the new date for armageddon they'd forgotten about 1914 that armageddon was to happen in 1914 now they were pushing 1925 Oh no, no, you do that for me. You, you, you do, you do. I can't get through to the local congregation. Nobody answers the phone. So if you do that for me, I'd be grateful. Yeah, I will do. Thank you, Mike. Okay, Robert. Thank you for the chat. Bye, bye, bye Mike. Bye, bye. bye.